This might be better than a French crepe. It's so dry. <laughs> It's so good. Hello everybody and welcome back to Budapest. Today we are going to show you some different Hungarian desserts. Whenever you think of Hungarian desserts, you probably think of chimney cake. We love chimney cake. We tried it the other day in the first video that we shot. So check that video out. But today we want to show you some desserts that are maybe not the most common and well known amongst tourists. So let's eat some sweet stuff. <laughs> We're here at Leszko Hungarian restaurant and we're about to try some desserts. So what I have here is Somlói Galushka. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, of course. We are going to butcher probably every Hungarian name in this whole video. But it's essentially a Hungarian trifle. So it's got these different little layers of sponge cake. It can be mixed with raisins and nuts. And this one has chocolate sauce on it as well. They always have nuts and raisins? Okay. The sauce. Okay, it always has chocolate sauce then, I guess. And it's topped with a mountain of whipped cream. So this looks really delicious and very sweet, and I can't wait to try it. I'll try to get all the layers in one. <laughs> That's too big of a bite. <laughs> Whatever. Mm. So just like it looks super rich, the chocolate on top actually reminds me of Jello brand pudding, that chocolate pudding that I had in my childhood all the time. And I think most North Americans probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah, tastes like chocolate pudding. And it does have raisins inside. I got a couple of those. The cake is very, very soft. The cream is obviously very creamy. And overall, it's actually not overwhelmingly sweet. I thought it was going to be, but I think it's a pretty nice balance. It's really, really delicious. The dessert that I'm gonna try is called Yesenia Puree, which is a chestnut puree. And it comes with a big blob of whipped cream. Apparently, this is more like an autumn dessert because chestnuts are more in season in autumn, but you can get it all year round. You can get it in a supermarket. They often put it through a potato grater to make it kind of into spaghetti. Here we have a bit more like, I don't know, flake. And I think more whipped cream at the bottom and I think it's also supposed to taste like rum. We've had this before, I love this. I don't actually like chestnuts, but this is delicious. Let's see if this is like I remember. Mm. It tastes very much like something you would eat in autumn. It tastes like rum, which I really like. It reminds me of like rum raisin ice cream or something like that. The paste is very thick, kind of floury or something. Like it's hard to describe. This is yummy. I've never had anything like this, so when you come to Hungary, you have to try this. Yes, Tinia Puri. I know exactly what Anya's talking about when she says it tastes flowery. It's got a really pasty texture in your mouth. Almost like, not like glue, but it really sticks to the roof of your mouth. And yeah, it's really got a very thick, pasty texture. I'm not the biggest fan of this, but this one's pretty good overall. It's decent. I prefer the, the Hungarian trifle though. Piriti Suprasta now. I hope I pronounced this right. We once walked past this shop and we saw the donuts in the window, so we had to have one and now we're back. And I've been dreaming about this donut since we first had it. It's called Farshani Fang, I think. And apparently it translates to carnival donut. And usually they eat it during carnival time, I think at the beginning of the year, which is quite similar to what we do in Germany where I'm from because we also eat donuts during carnival time but I have to say this donut is better I don't know if it's just this shop but look how big it is and it smells so good it has apricot jam on top and it's perfectly fried and it's very heavy mm. 
smell good. It's so soft, it doesn't have a filling. It has the jam on top. So sweet. Best donuts ever. Definitely one of the best donuts I've ever had. So unlike some other donuts, this donut doesn't get the sweetness from the dough itself. The donut is not actually that sweet, but the powdered sugar, crusted sugar on top, and the jam is where all the sweetness comes from. 100% agree with Anya, one of the best donuts we've ever had. Our next dessert is Pelicinta, which is a Hungarian crepe. So it's very similar to a French crepe, except it's made with mineral water and it's made with oat butter. It looks very similar to a French crepe as well. And I think that the most traditional version is fruit and cottage cheese, which is what we got. And ours has blueberries in it. So blueberries, sour cherries, and cottage cheese. It looks really, really delicious. So I'm gonna try it. It has like a very sticky kind of texture. Mm. Oh yeah, that is so good. It's really, really sweet. You can taste the sour cherries and the tartness from the blueberries. You have that kind of crumbly texture from the, the cottage cheese as well, but it's very light at the same time. It's really, really delicious. And you can also get savory versions, which we have as well. But since this is a dessert video, I'm not really going to show you that one today. I also read that the difference between the palacinta and the French crepe is that the dough gets used immediately and with French crepes apparently you let them sit for a while and the Hungarian palacintas are also really rolled and have more filling than a crepe. Mm. Mm. So fruity and yummy and kind of like cheesecake because of the cottage cheese. Yummy. This reminds me a bit more of German pancakes because they're a bit thicker than crepes. Delicious. Our next stop is at Retischbold. Not sure if I pronounced that right, but they sell strudels here. Because strudels are not only popular in Austria, but also in Hungary. And right here we have a popular flavor, which is poppy seed and plum. Both of those things are very popular, so we decided we'll get it together. There's some powdered sugar on top, and it's basically just a thin layer of pastry, kind of just like one layer almost, filled with poppy seed and plum paste. Let's see. Mm. It's so good. Just tastes like a big blob of poppy seed <laughs> cream. And I really like poppy seed. And you do have like a whole chunk of, of plum, which I really like. I think it's a nice addition to the poppy seed because it adds some fruity taste. So good. So admittedly, I am not the biggest fan of poppy seeds, so we got a second option as well. And this one is walnut. So let's give it a try. Whoa. Mm. Of course, as the name suggests, since it's walnut, it has a very strong nutty taste. It's very pasty, kind of like, almost like the chestnut puree that we had in the previous dessert. It's also really sweet from the powdered sugar on top. It's really delicious, and I know that Anya would love this one because she loves nuts. Something also really great about this is that this strudel place is really close to the Palacinta place. It's literally two buildings down, so super, super close, so you can kill two birds with one stone. Pretty cool. So now we're gonna try something very strange. So I've heard from a few people that this is a very love-hate kind of thing. Some people really like this, and some people really don't like this. So this is called Mikoshtesta, which is a sweet poppy seed pasta dessert. Yes, very strange, but I'm willing to give it a go. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not the biggest fan of poppy seed, but I really wanted to try this when I heard of it because I heard it's very unusual. So let's give it a try. So there are different versions of this, but this one is poppy seed and powdered sugar. We also have another one that Anya is going to try. Let's give it a go. <laughs> <coughs> oh. 
I don't know if it's supposed to be like this, but it is so dry <coughs> because there's just these poppy seeds. There's nothing to really lube it up. There's no butter or anything like that. I feel like if this had a big slab of butter on it and then you mix it together, it'd be probably pretty nice, but it seems like it's mostly just the poppy seed, maybe a tiny bit of oil and the sugars. I feel like it could be good maybe with a little bit more sugar and more butter or something, but overall it's not my favorite thing that we've tried so far. It's not terrible. I'm kind of excited to see what the other one's like. We actually had to order these because it was very hard to find a restaurant that served these, or at least for us as foreigners, couldn't find a place. So we ordered them on Volt. We're gonna put the name of the restaurant on the screen. And right here I have the walnut version, which is called Dios Testa, and it comes with apricot jam. So it's very bizarre. It's basically a plate of pasta with walnut on top and a bunch of apricot jam. This is so weird. It's so sweet because of the jam. It just tastes like pasta with jam on top. The nut is not very strong. I don't hate it, but it's not the best. I'll have a bite of the other one. There is a little bit of oil in the bottom, so I'm going to try and get a bit of that. I think this one way better. What? <laughs> it's like, it just has like this hint of poppy seed and I guess, yeah, with maybe I had a bit more oil. This one's really quite good. Like the other one's just too sweet and too heavy to just goes to your head and you go crazy immediately with a sugar rush. You go crazy immediately. <laughs> because it's just like a mouthful of jam. Uh, but this one is just like this lightly coated pasta. Quite like this. Who would have thought? So this is the end of our dessert tour. There's so many more desserts in Hungary and I hope we inspired you to try some other desserts than chimney cake when you come here. Mm -hmm. And if you're Hungarian, please let us know what your favorite desserts are in the comments. For now, this is the end of this video, so make sure you give it a like, write a comment, and subscribe. That is it for now. Bye! Goodbye.